Hey guys, welcome back, it's Missy. And today we're talking about cognitive dissonance. Cognitive meaning intellectual conscious thinking and dissonance meaning disagreement. Cognitive dissonance is when a discomfort arises from having two conflicting beliefs, values, or ideas. Since we don't like discomfort, it will cause us to change our actions or our beliefs to ease the discomfort or to eliminate it. So this means we could feel strongly about something or believe something and when a new piece of information that maybe challenges that, we will completely change our beliefs or change what we're doing in order to ease the discomfort. Now humans deal with this all the time. Simple example, smoking. There's a lot of information right now about how bad smoking is for you and most people know this but they still will continue to smoke. Why? Because their belief is that they feel like they need it or they can't survive without it or it helps them stay, stay skinny. So they will keep that belief in, and rid the thought or idea that something could happen to them. They will say that it's something that couldn't happen to them. They're not the person that they will get sick from it or so-and-so had lived a long life and they smoked and they were fine. And that's how they'll deal with the cognitive dissonance. Or how about when we are hooking up with someone and we really want a relationship with them, but they told us they don't want a relationship with us. So the way we may deal with that cognitive dissonance is we will tell ourselves that we don't really want a relationship or that they will change their mind and maybe they'll want to be with you one day and then you'll continue to hook up with them even though originally you wanted a relationship that's how we will deal with that conflicting new idea so why do we do this it's because we will always choose a path that is less resistant we will choose the path that causes less stress when we really believe something and then new information comes along and it makes us uncomfortable we will try to find any way we can in order to ease the discomfort, even if that means changing what we first originally thought or believed. This is because we as humans, we're here to survive. We are here to protect ourselves. We want limited discomfort. And so by picking the less stressful path, it limits the discomfort. Whatever will be the lesser of two evils, whatever will cause the less amount of stress is the path we will always take. Now, how does this affect when you are in narcissistic relationships? When you are in narcissistic relationships, in the very beginning, they are very loving and they have all this future faking and they paint this fantasy world and they know all the good things and bad things about you and they use that to their advantage of painting the pretty picture that you've always wanted. And then one day, if they do a complete 180 and they start to devalue you or they start to hurt you and that can be very confusing because you believe this person as this very loving good person and then all of a sudden they do something hateful or hurtful and those two ideas don't go well together so we try to find a way to ease the discomfort and so what we may do is we'll say well they said they loved me and they would never hurt me so maybe they're just having an off day or I know about their past and this is just them projecting their past and maybe there's something I could do about it or maybe I need to be better maybe I'm doing something wrong or maybe you'll believe that you deserved the treatment that they did to you or you believe that it's something that you could fix or there's something you did wrong and so that's how cognitive dissonance will affect you when you're in those dynamics. So this is the very beginning stages of the cognitive dissonance. And you will notice that you will start to play the story over and over again, um, that it's more you, you're being sensitive and it's not them. Or, you know, they also are constantly telling you, they're constantly doing this roller coaster of, you know, they love you and then they're nasty. And so you'll see these things, but then your beliefs are changing of oh you know this is just a moment in time that they're being like this it's actually me um, I caused this it really those beliefs start to really change even though originally you didn't believe those things you believe something different you maybe you believed love was very different you believe relationships should be very different so this is the beginning then over time what happens because these start to become your beliefs 
other people may point it out and you'll immediately defend it and be like no 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 like you know he they're doing this because they're having a bad day or they're doing this because you know i'm a little bit difficult you will start to defend that new belief in order to limit that discomfort even though it's pretty obvious that they are mistreating you or there's something wrong that they're doing it doesn't matter how obvious it is your beliefs are changing because of this cognitive dissonance and because you're don't want to deal with the reality or how uncomfortable it is you don't want to deal with that reality that this person that made you believe they loved you is actually hurting you that is so painful that happens in relationships or like even when you have a family when you have a mom or a dad or a brother or sister or someone that is supposed to love you and protect you when they're doing those things they're like no 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 my mom and dad they really love me but they just had a tough upbringing or you know they just this is just the way they are right now and it's gonna get better later even though it's pretty clear that that's not how you behave when you love someone or when you really care for someone and that's how you can get trapped in that cognitive dissonance it literally alters your beliefs it changes the way your brain functions and when you change your beliefs you change your actions when your actions change your beliefs change it coincides together and your thoughts change that's the belief cycle now, how do you know if you're dealing with cognitive dissonance? You'll often be confused. Something won't feel right. It doesn't make sense. You'll often ask yourself this question of, am I in the wrong? Am I doing something wrong? And it may be hard for you to kind of figure out what you're doing wrong. And just things don't make sense. So if you're feeling any type of confusion or discomfort, that is a big sign that you may be dealing with cognitive dissonance. So what can you do if you're dealing with cognitive dissonance well the antidote to cognitive dissonance is integrity integrity means being honest and true with your true beliefs and this can be tough when you are being gaslit and you are being manipulated to believe in something else and it sucks and it's so unfortunate because your beliefs really do change to start to feel like you're worth this mistreatment or they make you feel like you're nothing without them even though that happens it doesn't mean that you are doomed and you're just stuck in these beliefs there's something you can do about it so the very first thing you want to do is if you are recognizing you're starting to blame yourself or you're starting to be confused you notice they're being nasty or they're doing something that's really messed up and then you start to feel a type of way where you're confused or you're being blamed for it that is a time when you want to call it out when you are starting to have that confusion say this is cognitive dissonance right now i feel unease i feel discomfort this is cognitive dissonance once you call it out as we always talk about then you can disassociate it so it's not a part of you you're recognizing that it's happening then what you want to do is you want to start to really focus on the facts of the situation so that way you don't get stuck in that cognitive dissonance so say okay i know for a fact that they yelled at me i know for a fact that you know this situation happened that they were ignoring me they were being passive aggressive they started taking digs at me i know this for a fact and so write it down and then say i noticed that with myself i started to get defensive or i started to get upset or i started to get uncomfortable this is the information you know so then you can kind of put the pieces together and you can see in front of you, okay, this is the reality of the situation. They are mistreating me. And I have to face the facts that they are mistreating me, which that can be very uncomfortable. And then you need to start to reaffirm this to yourself. As weird as that sounds, why would you want to reaffirm something painful? It's to keep you in reality because they are taking you out of reality. You want to stay in reality of this is the situation at hand that is happening. So the more you stay in that reality, the less you'll have this cognitive dissonance, and the more likely you are to leave this situation or the more you are to be able to handle what is happening in your reality, in your life right now. So rather than blaming yourself, you're able to be like, okay, no, I know that they're doing this thing wrong and this is what I can do about it. I need to leave the situation. I need to gray rock. I need to stand up for myself i need to set a boundary you can identify what you actually need so it prevents from this cognitive dissonance happening and then you becoming a supply for them or you getting stuck in that abusive cycle so that is the very start and then the next step you want to do is 
trust your intuition and you also need to change those beliefs so stay in your reality and then start to listen to yourself so oftentimes like i had mentioned you start to feel like this worthlessness or feel like you can never get out there is that when you have that cognitive dissonance you do feel stuck or trapped and feel like you need them or you won't survive without them or that if you leave something really bad's gonna happen and you start to form these negative beliefs because they've ingrained that in your brain and they've made you terrified to leave them because they have fear of abandonment and they projected all of these negative things onto you so you need to you know be able to identify the beliefs that you do have that you that you believe that maybe you feel like you're not worth a healthy relationship or you believe that you'll be alone, whatever these negative beliefs you have, write them down so you can see it right in front of you. And then that's when you can change those beliefs and change that story of, okay, so let's say you're afraid to leave this person because maybe something bad will happen. So you can ask, what really bad could happen? Maybe you'll be alone, but you already are alone in that relationship. They're just a body. Maybe you worry that you won't be able to support yourself. You were able to support yourself before this person never came in the picture. Why wouldn't you be able to now? Maybe you fear that you won't be able to make good decisions. You were able to make good decisions before them. Who is to say that you can't make dis good decisions now? You probably never even thought that you weren't making bad decisions until you met this person. All these things are just negative things they've uh, portrayed onto you or molded you to believe, but they're not real. This is a false narrative they put on you that you're the bad guy and you are this certain person. So you need to start to challenge those beliefs and see those beliefs are lies. They're not real. You can definitely survive without this person. You'll be fine without them, truly. You won't really be alone because you already feel alone when you're with them. You're going to be fine without them. You'll probably actually form better relationships without them because you won't have someone controlling you or isolating you anymore or controlling who you talk to or what you say you can be more of yourself you're more likely to have more fulfilling relationships without them and that's what you need to remind yourself of is challenging those thoughts asking yourself well what really is the worst that could happen if you know this belief was true and if maybe I did do this certain thing and how can I really change it? That's you facing the facts and challenging that belief. You have informed this belief that you are worthless or you deserve this mistreatment, that 100% is a lie. There are no facts to back that up. It doesn't even matter what you have done. If you maybe have become a little manipulative of yourself or you started to take on some of their traits to survive, that doesn't mean that you deserve that mistreatment at all. Or, you know, when you were a little girl, maybe you were mistreated or a little boy, you were mistreated by your parents. You never deserve that to begin with. You deserve love because you are a human being. And that's it. No ifs, ands, or buts. So start to write down these beliefs and write down how you can counteract those beliefs and really try to lean into it with integrity and being your true authentic self. Or maybe even if you struggle with that, think of an alter ego. Think of someone you would like to be and what this alter ego believes they deserve. And then start to imagine you are this alter ego when you are having those negative beliefs. Imagine you are this alter ego that believes that deserves these good positive things. And that can really start to help you to be more of that person. So I hope this kind of helps clarify what cognitive dissonance is. What do you guys think? Leave it all in the comments below. And please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with someone that you think may need it. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye guys. I'm a busy bee today. I literally had this shower. We don't want to stink up the, uh, climate change already is happening. We don't want to stink up the ozone. I'm a little crooked again. Wouldn't be a, a me video if I wasn't crooked. I didn't realize my nail was wet and now I have a fingerprint in it. Now if someone can take my fingerprint and my nail and frame me for murder. They're gonna frame me for murder by taking my nail polish. That's not how I want to start. That's not how I want to start.